Your car's idling rough, fuel economy tanked, and no scanner in sight? Good, you don't need one. In the next minutes, I'll show you the exact key and pedal sequences dealership techs use to force an idle relearn. No tools, zero cost. Here's the catch. Timing is everything. Do it right, and you clear misfire counters and stubborn adaptations. Miss a beat, and nothing happens. We'll start with the simple key cycling that works on many cars, then the precise pedal dance some Nissans and Toyotas respond to. Stay, because the sequence is the entire fix. Before we move on, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. You're about to touch nothing but the ignition and calm a bucking idle. How can a 10-second pause do what scanners can't? Modern ECUs carry short-term adaptations in volatile memory. After a dead battery, throttle cleaning, or a misfire spike, those quick learns can stick in a weird spot. The car thinks it knows how much air it needs at idle, but it's using yesterday's numbers. Instead of wiping everything and starting over, you can prompt the computer to wake up, shut down, and re-index those fast memories without touching a wrench. Pulling the battery nukes presets. You can lose radio codes, clock settings, and on some cars you risk immobilizer headaches that turn a simple reset into a tow. So what's the safer middle path? Use the ECU's own power-up and power-down routines. That's what key cycling targets. It doesn't blast the slate clean. It asks the car to reinitialize the parts that go stale after events that confuse short-term logic. Here's the core move. Put the key to on, not start. Dash lights on, engine off. Count a steady 10. Turn it off. Wait a couple seconds. Repeat that three to five times. Those cycles force the modules to wake, check sensors, and shut down in order. Many ECUs clear volatile counters and rebuild their immediate idle and airflow references during this sequence. You keep your radio presets and avoid any immobilizer lockouts because the battery stays connected the whole time. Older Toyota and Lexus models often respond well after throttle body cleanings that leave the blade a hair more open than before. The idle hunts, you cycle the key, and the computer resets its immediate airflow target so the wandering settles. Many domestic cars, especially those that flag random misfires during a carbon-heavy episode, will calm down after a few cycles and a short idle. Misfire counters that were stuck at the threshold get refreshed, and the engine stops trying to compensate for a problem that's already gone. This move doesn't erase hard faults. If a sensor lies or a coil is weak, the symptom returns. That's the point. You're isolating memory artifacts. If the car behaves right after cycling and then stays smooth, you just freed a stuck adaptation. If it comes back rough, you've surfaced a real issue that needs a tool and data to chase. Set yourself up right. Turn off headlights, HVAC, rear defrost, and any big electrical load so the battery stays stable. Don't touch the throttle. Moving the pedal can skew what the ECU thinks is closed. If the battery's marginal, throw a charger on low amp to hold voltage during the cycles. Keep the steering straight on cars with electric power steering so you don't wake assist modules and add load. Use this as a quick screen. Run the cycles, start the car, let it idle for a minute without accessories, and listen. If it smooths out and settles near its normal idle, you likely knocked out a sticky short-term trim. If it still bucks or stalls, that's your flag to escalate. The reset did its job as a filter, not a miracle. What you now have is a repeatable, low-risk routine that preserves presets and often restores baseline idle and trims in minutes. No codes lost, no alarms tripped, no radio pin hunts. And if this doesn't finish the job, the next level isn't guesswork. When key cycling isn't enough, the hidden factory sequences come next. The pedal dance that tells the ECU to relearn idle and throttle targets on command. Those key cycles woke the modules. Now the pedal dance tells them exactly what to relearn. There's a reason techs look like they're playing Simon Says. Those presses speak directly to the ECU, and when you hit the right rhythm, the car enters a quiet service mode that updates idle airflow and throttle baseline without any tools. Here's the idea. 
Manufacturers hide sequences that combine key position, pedal movement, and wait times. You're not erasing data. You're asking the ECU to overwrite specific adaptive values it treats as temporary. The result is a fresh baseline after things like throttle body cleaning or a power loss. The trap is timing. Miss a window by a second and the ECU shrugs. That's why people call it a myth, because if the cadence is off, nothing changes. Let's start with Nissan's idle air volume learn. Get the engine warm, fans off, steering straight, and every load off. AC, lights, rear defrost, even the radio. Turn the key to on, count three seconds, then press and release the accelerator fully five times within five seconds. Wait seven seconds, press and hold the pedal down. You should see the check engine light flash. That's the ECU listening. Release the pedal, start the engine, and let it idle. If the sequence took, idle speed stabilizes within spec, and the wander fades as the ECU recalculates bypass airflow. On Toyota and Lexus, an electronic throttle reset is common after cleaning. Key to ON, engine off. Slowly depress the pedal to the floor. Hold for about 30 seconds, then release. Wait a short interval, then start the engine and let it idle without accessories. This clears the learned closed throttle angle and target idle, which can drift when the throttle plate is cleaner and moves a touch differently than before. Some models want a couple of slow presses instead of one long hold, and some require an additional wait before the start. Always check the exact routine for your model and year. Certain GM models respond to pedal hold routines right after key on. You hold the accelerator down for a set period, sometimes with a second hold after a short wait, to nudge the ECU into rewriting throttle position or even transmission adapt values. The concept mirrors the others. Ignition on sets the stage. A pedal command triggers service mode, and the ECU rewrites immediate baselines it only trusts when the driver isn't asking for throttle. Why this works comes down to pattern recognition. The ECU looks for very specific service mode signatures. Key on without cranking. A fixed number of pedal actuations inside tight time windows and periods of no input. Hit those marks and it recalculates idle airflow and throttle zero points, especially after battery events or when a freshly cleaned throttle flows more air at the same angle. Follow strict rules. Coolant needs to be in normal range. Too cold or a fan cycling on mid-procedure can bump the ECU out of the window. Keep voltage steady. Turn off AC, lights, and audio. Don't touch the wheel on EPS cars, because steering input wakes assist and adds load. If the radiator fan kicks on, wait for it to stop before you start. Then commit to the timing. Count out loud if it helps. Nail it and the payoff shows up fast. Idle wander smooths, hanging RPM drops to target, and stoplight stalls disappear within a single drive cycle. Miss a beat and you'll see no change, which is still useful feedback. You've reset memory. Now the car needs live data to refine it. A short, controlled drive with steady speeds and clean D-cells sets monitors and locks in the fix. The secret isn't magic, it's timing. Those key and pedal sequences flip OEM switches most drivers never touch. And when you hit them right, the ECU updates the values that cause rough idle hanging RPM and random stalls. Start simple. Run the key cycling routine. Then do your brand's relearn exactly as specified. Post what changed. If the symptoms creep back, that's a real fault worth scanning, not a memory hiccup. Now you've reset memory. The car needs a proper drive to lock it in. Next, we'll walk the exact drive cycle that sets readiness monitors fast so inspections don't become an avoidable headache. 